how to withdraw crypto from your Binance account to a wallet that you own or another exchange account that you have. There's gonna be different methods depending on the destination and it's gonna cost a different amount depending on the chain that you use. So we'll go through that in this video. Firstly, come to your Binance account and the Fiat and Spot account and then choose the asset that you want to withdraw. So I'm gonna search for BTC right here, Bitcoin, and then press withdraw over here and it will take us through to the withdrawal page. So the destination that you're sending to is important and obviously the network that you use. Um, so we'll go through that right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is look at sending an asset out to a wallet that you own. So this is a trust wallet. If you have a decentralized crypto wallet like Ledger, Trezor, Trust Wallet, Coinbase Wallet, something decentralized, uh, then they will accept Bitcoin transactions over the Bitcoin network. So what you have to do here on your Binance account is get the withdrawal address, and then it's gonna sort it out for you. So come over to the wallet that you're withdrawing to, press the asset that you wanna deposit into that place. So we've got Bitcoin here, then we'll press receive, and then right here, it shows me my wallet address. So what I can do now is copy this address as a destination. So I'm just gonna press copy, and then go back to the Binance account right here and paste it in. Where it says enter address right here, we just wanna paste that address in and it automatically chooses a network for us. This is because as you can see here, this is a Bitcoin address. It starts with BC and so that is absolutely a Bitcoin address. And so it automatically knows which network to send it on because you can't send anything uh, through to a Bitcoin address that's on a different chain. So it automatically chooses, you have a Bitcoin address and I know to send this on the Bitcoin network because that's the only way to get it to that address. So you can click this and you can see it's going to take $5 to send over the Bitcoin network. But if you wanna use the Bitcoin network to send it to a Bitcoin address, that is what you have to do. So you can click that right here. Uh, withdrawal fees have been adjusted in recent weeks, I understand. Now that address is right here. So what's happening, if you can see this, just focus on the top one for now. You have Bitcoin on the Binance exchange. You have a value of Bitcoin. What they're gonna do is use the Bitcoin network to send it over on the Bitcoin network to land in your wallet and that is on the Bitcoin network. Whether it goes anywhere else, they're using the Bitcoin network to send it to your Bitcoin address. And the Bitcoin network is more expensive than others. So what we can do here is choose an amount that we want to send out. So whatever that is, um, there's obviously a minimum amount you can withdraw plus the transaction fees. Now what we have to do is just go down and it says network fee. So that may change over time. Receive amount, that is the amount that's actually received in the wallet as you can see. So make sure if you do need a specific receive amount that that is there, then just press withdraw right here. Now what will, what will come up is a uh, box that checks the transaction. They're going to send you an email with a code with six digits. You have to put that in. And then if you've set up a Google Authenticator or something like that, you'll have to put that code in as well. Once those two codes are in, press accept, and then they will send that transaction out to the wallet address that you've chosen. If you've tried to withdraw tokens before and you've seen a few different networks that you can send it over and wondered what they are, this is what they mean. So staying on Bitcoin again, we'll withdraw the address right here and we'll choose a network. So as you can see, there are actually three options to send Bitcoin over three different networks. The Bitcoin blockchain, as we've just seen, but there's also an option to send it over Ethereum and also the Binance Smart Chain or the BNB Smart Chain. So what does that mean? Well, essentially that uses something called a pegged token or a wrapped token. And so this is how it works. You have an amount of value in your Binance account. And what you can do is use that value to send over with different types of tokens. So if you want to use another token, for example, this BEP20 right here, uh, we can just uh, say, yes, I'm sure. It's going to ask you, well, where do you want to send it? So this is actually what happens is that Binance have an amount of Bitcoin and they've actually created a separate token called BTCB or Binance BTC. Um, and this is the value of Bitcoin, but it's issued not on the Bitcoin blockchain, it's issued on their BNB smart chain. So let's say they take Bitcoin and they take a billion dollars of Bitcoin and they put it in a wallet on the Bitcoin blockchain. So they have a billion dollars right there. What they then do is issue what's called a pegged or a wrapped token on their BNB smart chain. So that billion dollars in value then goes over to the BNB smart chain and you have a billion dollars of Bitcoin on the BNB smart chain. 
So the value is there. And of course, the mechanism is that if you have Bitcoin on the BNB smart chain, you can withdraw it from there and reclaim your Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? So it's just value on a different chain. Now, this isn't Bitcoin. This is a kind of IOU. It's known as a wrapped token or a pegged token on a different chain. Uh, and so if you withdraw Bitcoin over the BNB smart chain, which you can do, you do have the value of Bitcoin, but it's just not on the Bitcoin blockchain. And what that means is that you have to have different trust assumptions. You are, you are now using the BNB smart chain. Uh, so you must trust the BNB smart chain not to do anything crazy like shut down uh, or be you know co-opted by some government which doesn't give you your money back or whatever. Or uh, you, you also have to trust that the mechanism that Binance are buying Bitcoin and backing it one for one is also good and upstanding. Those tr two trust assumptions make it obviously way less secure than having Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain. However, what we'll see is it's much cheaper to send transactions. So different products for different people that may want to use those things. Uh, so if we go over to the trust wallet again, what we can do is scroll down and I have Binance Peg BTCB. So this is the Binance Peg version. So what you can do is click this and I'm going to press receive again. And what you'll see here is that the wallet address is completely different. I now have a BNB Smart Train address, which is known as an EVM address. Uh, not to worry about that, but it's a different type of address because it's a different blockchain. So what I'm gonna do is copy this right here and then go over to the Binance. What I can now do is paste that address into the address field. And what you can see is that the network isn't chosen. If I click on this, you'll see that Bitcoin, the block, the Bitcoin blockchain is now unmatched. I cannot send it to an address there because the address that I've put in is not a Bitcoin address, but you can send it over these two. What I said is an EVM address. It's an Ethereum style address and both the BNB chain and Ethereum chains um, actually support this type of address. And so Binance doesn't know which chain you're, you're using because it could be an address on both of those. Now, what I've seen or what I showed you here is that uh, we're using a Binance Smart Chain address. So I'm gonna click this one. And as you can see, the uh, transaction fee is 10 cents instead of, what was it, $5. So you can click this, press yes, I'm sure, and then put the amount in and go through the same process. What this will do is send that value of Bitcoin that you have, it will switch it into the pegged token and put it on the BNB smart chain for you. So you have Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin on the BNB smart chain. And if you want to do that, you have to trust the BNB smart chain and trust that Binance have the value backing it and that nothing will go wrong. That is a significant trust assumption. So buyer beware and just make sure you're, you're understanding that if you want to withdraw that value over to the BNB smart chain, the benefit of this is much lower transaction fees. The drawdown, the drawback is, you know, potential trust assumptions. Using these cheaper chains is definitely a low cost method of transferring value from one exchange like Binance to another exchange. So if you have another exchange that you wanna transfer assets to, I'll use BitGet in this example, we're gonna deposit some BTC and the chain that we're going to use is not the Bitcoin blockchain, but the BEP20 Binance Smart Chain. So click on that and it's gonna give me my wallet address that I can copy over. So what we can do is now go back and paste that address into the address field in Binance and use the BEP20 Binance Smart Chain and transfer some value over. What we're doing is essentially trans transferring value from Binance. So we're debiting that value from Binance and they know that it's Bitcoin and they're sending a message over to BitGet saying, we have a thousand dollars of Bitcoin that you need to credit to this wallet address. And BitGet knows it's your wallet address. So they're gonna credit that value in Bitcoin to your exchange account. Now that just saves us $5 transferring the value of Bitcoin from one exchange to another exchange. And the trust assumptions are basically, well, you're using centralized exchanges anyway, right? And so you're obviously trusting both of those. Uh, and the message that is sent simply just costs less money. And so the trust assumption is not your keys, not your crypto anyway. If you're using these centralized exchanges, you obviously trust them to hold the value and then have that value there and withdraw it if and when you want to. So that's just a cheaper way to transfer some coin from one exchange to another. Uh, it is a cheaper way to do that. I'll leave links to BitGet down in the description if you don't have an account yet, deposit bonus and trading bonus there if you need it. When withdrawing assets that aren't the native gas token on a blockchain, you will have many choices 
of what chain to send it to. So I'm going to show you with US dollar tether here. So if you've got a blockchain gas token, right? So the layer one token like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, it's easy just to say I'm going to withdraw Cardano over the Cardano blockchain. I'm going to draw the Solana over the Solana blockchain. If you have an asset built on top of that network like USDT, then there are many options. So what we're going to do here again is go to network and you can see a bunch of different options because US dollar tether is issued on these many chains. Again, if you know that the network that you want to receive it on, then just choose that network and it's going to go over to that network. So as an example here, if you have US dollar tether and you have, you know, a wallet, a decentralized wallet and you know that you want tether on the Ethereum mainnet. So you'll choose Ethereum mainnet ERC20 and then the value of that tether will go over to your wallet and it will be on the Ethereum mainnet blockchain. So you choose Ethereum right here. So what we're going to do is go over to a MetaMask account and this is on the Ethereum mainnet and I'm just going to copy my wallet address here and then paste it in as the address. You'll see the network is not chosen automatically because like I said, if you have an EVM style address, in an Ethereum style wallet, your address is the same given all of these different EVM networks. You can see these are unmatched because these are not EVM networks and so you can't send it anyway. However, this wallet address shows I have a bunch of different networks that I can send it over. If you have a wallet that is showing Ethereum mainnet tokens and you send it over one of these other networks, you'll think, oh no, my US dollar tether has completely disappeared. It hasn't disappeared, it's just that it's on a different network. You actually still own it because you own that wallet address. So what you have to do if you sent it to the wrong address is go over to your MetaMask or other wallet and then choose a different uh, uh, blockchain. So I can choose Binance Smart Chain or all these other EVM chains. And if you click on it, you should be able to see that your assets are on that chain and not the one that you sent it to. I will leave a link below on how to add networks to MetaMask and how to use MetaMask and add these networks because they are not automatic. So if you can't see your assets, it will, you might have sent it over the wrong chain. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.